Today we're at the Venetian Canal Shops because it's a place that I always viewed as a place of fantasy, wonder. Uh, something that also represented to me a series of successes. Because when I was growing up as a kid, I was somebody who was always fascinated by the whole Renaissance era. I was somebody who liked the idea that you could get success and get a skill set and mastery in many different things. So I would study things about you know, various uh, Renaissance people. My friends would always tease me about this. I was actually doing this for fun. I was reading things like uh, De Medici or uh, Machiavelli and studying about the, the Renaissance man concept. The concept, basically, for those of you who don't remember old school European history, is the concept is that the people who were in, the, in wealth and power at the time, they would study how to get success in things like hunting, archery, conversational debate, government, and all sorts of other skill sets on the basis that that is how you become the Renaissance man or the kind of person who not only has good solid morals, values, and has like uh, the loyalty and trust and respect of his peers as a leader, but someone who had the skill set so that he could lead by example. And that's something that I always viewed as really important. I'm not here though to talk more about that. I'm here to talk about how you could gain a lot of success in life and also have very high level dating when you're really successful. I wanted to talk to you guys about my dating experiences and how that process has changed because it's very unique from say a lot of the guys in the RSD world even though I'm highly indoctrinated in the beliefs that Tyler's teaching. I first off was growing up in a situation that was probably like a surprise to a lot of other people. A lot of people believe that real social dynamics was funded not from like our hard work or effort. It was. But they thought that somehow it was you know, from my father supporting us financially because he became a very successful and famous businessman. He was very successful, so much so that Harvard newspaper newsletters were talking about him and his success as an alumni on a regular basis for quite a while. I myself am sitting at Harvard right now. However, it's not about having like connections made successful or having money. It was about being resourceful to get the resources that we needed to build the company and a lot of hard work and a lot of effort. And a lot of the things that also are interesting about money, for example, and getting success, is a lot of people just hate success. They hate the power that comes with success because they don't have it. They hate money. They don't like the idea that other people have more and other people have less. You know, a lot of people have uh, more socialist beliefs. They believe that the wealth should be spread out to other people and once you have a certain amount of wealth, you should just give that to everyone else. At the same time, I believe that if you work hard and you gain success to get an awesome dating life, you get more money for your business life, you should be able to spend it on yourself and also the experiences that are able to be afforded by doing that. That's why I built Real Social Dynamics. I also worked really hard. I had to suffer a lot. When we first built this company, I had to deal with such poverty that I literally had to go to the Sheraton LAX airport, go to the parking lot there, and sleep in my 1997 Toyota Avalon. We're talking a car that was 10 years old at the time. This is even after being in RSD for like five or six years. We got rid of Project Hollywood Mansion, it was too expensive and all that other stuff. And then I would go to Owen's place to take a shower. I'd eat apples and bananas from the free hallway that uh, offered apples and bananas. Used the gym there for free, used their Wi-Fi. And I still have to pay seven to $14 a day, depending on it was a weekday or weekend, just to crash there because I couldn't afford a regular apartment. That lasted for two to four weeks of me traveling around doing that, trying to hustle. And at the same time, we were teaching boot camps. We were teaching programs. We had digital products. We had to hustle. Now, if you fast forward a little bit, in order to recover, I created a world tour. About a year after all this, I created a world tour because I wanted to get out of this poverty. I was in business for five years and most businesses fail after five years. 99% of businesses fail after five years. And so I wanted a situation where I could get myself out of this. And I came up with the most ridiculous idea. I took out of an airline magazine, a map, and it had all the cities that American, Delta, United, Food to, because I took it out of all three of the major airlines, the three alliances, you know, which is Sky Team, um, and uh, the two other alliances, I can't remember, One World, uh, whatever. <laughs> and basically, I thought, you know, I should just Google these places and find out all the cities that had over a million people and travel there to like experience what a dating life is out there and at the same time, meet clients. So I'd have fun and I found out that I was a really good salesperson. I always knew this because that's why we were able to build sales. But at the same time with growing overhead infrastructure, it was hard to manage and so my dating life was mostly just inviting girls over to my place. Maybe I'd make a meal and it would be a really crappy meal because I only know how to make one thing. 
which is crappy spaghetti bolognese out of a can. And then I knew how to make a treat, which is chocolate covered strawberries, which you take a bunch of chocolate sauce and you put it on your strawberries and try to like refrigerate it so it's cool and it looks good. I sucked at that as well and it tastes more like crap and slime. But it looked cool. I think the effort is what's counting because a lot of girls care more about the effort and they're attracted to that ability that you're taking innovation and it's kind of cute too that you're putting in that effort. At the same time um, of me going out, a lot of my college experience in Wisconsin was about cold approach pickup. Going out to try to pull girls for a one night stands, trying to get the day in life from meeting girls in the bars and clubs. I went out every night. Tyler and I did what we would typically call as one of those challenges, those 30 day challenges, that we did it for three years. So it was a 1,000 day challenge. And we had a lot of learning lessons and skill sets here. At the same time though, my day in life was really interesting. I had parties. I was very resourceful. And I was able to leverage the power of having a network. Even when I was in college, even when I didn't really have much money and I was just living the college life, I was throwing parties using not just like my fraternity and having resources where all these people put together their resources to come at the party. I was doing it so though, just by myself, just because for me, I wanted to build a soul circle and I thought it was a fun way of expression. Of course, I had a lot of genuine friends that didn't want to come to my party as well, just doing extra quicker activities from like a dance club or from going to like uh, jogging with another person. You know, just like fun things like that or coffee, whatever. The typical things that people do typically for dating. However, as somebody who got involved with pickup, I wanted to also, just like all the other guys, kind of get out of the mundane. Now, a lot of people are really interested in the success and the variety in terms of fucking as many girls as they could. That diversity of sleeping with a massive amount of girls. And I think it's awesome. I think you can have a great success when you're just trying to pull that situation of getting a lot of one night stands and a lot of success. RC instructors do it all the time. They have sex with beautiful girls. At the same time, for me, I always wanted the experience of having a deeper connection. So I've had meaningful connections and relationships with women that I think RC instructors have as well. But I've done it mostly through a lot of not just parties. As I grew up and got out of my college age, I changed from like the typical cold approach, cold approach, cold approach, and doing hookups to more of like a dating situation that relied on the level of success I had with business. So let's say I did my world tour, and at that world tour, I was able to get a situation where I was able to have a nice place to live. I didn't have to like live out of my suitcase anymore after like three years of doing so and hustling and, and suffering and taking on the risk of success and a high chance of failure. And I did that so that I could build a life for myself where I could have the luxury of not having to do that and also entertain myself. So a lot of my day life when I was, you know, kind of just living that Los Angeles Hollywood lifestyle and also eventually kind of traveling and even when I was on my tour after I was able to get debt free and cover everything, a lot of it had to do with kind of like longer relationship kind of stuff because I wasn't having time to go out all night to go to the bars and clubs. I was hustling, I was working during the daytime. I was making phone calls, I was taking care of business. And I was super jealous of all the RC instructors that were not having to do any of this. Now if you look at our guys nowadays, a lot of them have to build their brand with us and they're using the resources that we built and we did it through RSD to kind of do that. But at the same time, I've had to do that for years without any of the abilities to kind of push through and get that success. So in my dating life, a lot of it was from cold approach, but not cold approach in the typical like sense of going to the bar and club. A lot of it might be just cold approaching to meet a girl, connecting with her fast, and then inviting her out and doing a lot of day twos. And in my day twos, because I wasn't having the time, of, the luxury of like being in like an upscale lounge where we could sit down and talk, or like having a lot of uh, time for flash and then moving on, and then, uh, or not, not didn't really have as much of a desire to do that anymore because I've done that so many times. I wanted to have like something that was deeper, having more of an emotional connection. I wanted girls to really be attracted to me for me as opposed to like that quick, slight impression that I might have made in a bar or club. So I tried to, tried to discover, maneuver around ways that I could do that, yet still try to maintain who I am, my identity, and stay congruent to my beliefs. Some of the things I did was degustations, omakases, tasting meals. So for those of you guys who are not familiar with this, these are restaurants that are you know, a little bit more expensive. But when you have success with money, you could afford that. And I did that not because I believe that taking girls out to nice restaurants would get you sex. It's not. Most of the times you go out with a girl, you take her to a nice restaurant, you're probably not going to get laid. And that's fine. Because for me, I was kind of like just interviewing the girl. I was trying to get to know the girl and trying to get her to know me. It wasn't like an interview, like a job interview. 
a lot of the business skills and stuff like that that you learn in like the business world. You just gotta do a typical job interview, trying to find commonalities and morals and values and connections, and making sure that you guys can fit in the same corporate culture. And I kind of do that, but I do it not in a typical like job sense way. It's more like a fun thing. So I'm there eating, and you have tastings. So a tasting is as opposed to like having a, a one course meal. You might have seven, 10, 20 courses, pairing it with wine. And then you have like, instead of it being like a 10 minute meal, 30, 20, 30 minute meal, and like a half hour to an hour waiting for your food at these nice places, you might have one, two, three hours. You're actually experiencing stuff continually with pairings, food, and sitting down, it's cool ambiance. I will say though, by doing this and showing that you have the ability to do this as a successful guy for me, and not really caring about the result, not like caring, like, like I'm trading like a food for sex. Girls won't give you like sex for a steak or some shit like that. But the, what they will do is they'll give you, you know, the time. You have the time to convey who you are, the time to convey your personality. And the law of that allowed me to have a situation where I could really convey who I am, connect with a girl, and get success in my dating life and connect and do that again and again and again. Other things that I did that was kind of atypical of a situation where I was just like cold approaching for coffee or going on a jog or watching a movie at my place or her place or going to like a typical like show in the park or something. When I got like success in the business world, a lot of my success had to do with a dating life that's surrounded by other interesting things that some of it was kind of expensive. But I did it for me because I really always invested in the experiences because it allowed me to get in state. And when I was in state, I felt like I was kind of like emanating the success I got, I was able to convey that to girls and that happiness and that charisma kind of came out of me. It was more streamlined as opposed to like feeling like it was scripted where I was not really like who I am. And that comes across very, very obviously when you're interacting with anyone. You kind of have to get in that flow state where you're just talking and talking and talking. You are talking true to yourself so you can just talk forever. Well, I know Owen talks about like Star Wars where you see the words coming down the page in the intro. He was always seeing that thing. Now he's like dual Star Wars as he calls it. We see like multiple screens and he can jump from multiple thread to multiple thread. We call that open threading. Going from loop to loop from one conversation to another and as a result you always have more interesting things to talk about. And I would always do that in my conversations when I was in my dating life. Other things that I like is spas. I think it was always cool to have luxury spas. I still do that today with my wife because in a spa, especially if you do couples treatments, you do things like where you have a bath together, you like uh, have like a steam shower, or you might have like a couple's massage. But the thing is, it's a very intimate experience. Most of the time, you're not clothed. I would even do this so much on first dates. You know, even with the first date with my wife, for example, I thought it was awesome. Now, that luxury spas at like five or seven star hotels, it's not cheap. We're only spending a couple hundred dollars per person. And you know, if you're somebody who has had so many years of having $20 in your pocket, like guys like Derek, who has made millions of dollars, and he's kind of under the tail because of that. And as a result, he has massive success, but he probably will even detest the idea of even spending $20 to have dinner or buy drinks with their friends or girls because he hates and despises so much the idea that a girl would like him for his money. And I also think that's important also, because if you have a girl that only likes you for your money, there's many times, most of the time in life where you have roller coasters once you have success and you have money. And if you have that, you're gonna lose all your girls. You're not gonna have long-term relationships. This is a short-term fleeting moment anyway. You don't want that. You want loyalty in your life. Loyalty above everything else has always been kind of like one of those mafia-style values I've had, not just within myself, but I expect that from all the people I'm close with, especially in romantic relationships and romantic situations. So as a result, I wanted to have a situation where I could experience these kind of things. I've gone and had a success, so I was able to do things like go to Chicago with my wife, and instead of going skydiving with her, I had a situation where I rented out one of these skydiving planes, and we got dressed up, but instead of us dressing up with parachutes, we, I put in a mattress in there, a picnic basket, some food and some wine, and when it took off, and they wanted everyone to uh, jump out of the plane, I stayed on the plane so I could join the Mile High Club. And then uh, the plane would end and say, thank you for flying Mile High Services Charters. We know you don't have a lot of options when you're flying with us, but we appreciate you choosing us. And just have uh, fun things like going tours or exciting adventures. Now, going on tour, a lot of the things that I had to do was, uh, you know, have, you know, my wife, who I was dating at the time, fly to me. I think there's nothing wrong with flying a girl that you're dating and you're hooking up with and you have intimate relationships and a deep emotional connection with and whatever to travel with you. 
A lot of people are saying money's e e evil or uh, whatever, you know, other people say money's easy. But it, the thing is, money shouldn't be looked as like a tool to gain success or attraction. Rather, it's something that you earn through hard work, effort, or what have you. And dating should not be looked at as something that has any ties to money either because it's really something that you use as resources and access to things. The funny thing is, if you come from that mindset and you are taking girls out as a successful guy to like nice restaurants, some girls will feel that ambiance, that exuding, that you don't care, that you, you, you have this money you're spending on yourself and you just want to create these nice experiences. And some girls will just sleep with you because of that vibe. It's not because of the money though. It's because of this other stuff. And those are the kind of girls you want anyway. Now, if you look at other things that I've done in my life, or like my typical dating life, a lot of it has to do with adventures. I like doing crazy activities. I like going on AV riding, I like doing things like indoor skydiving, outdoor skydiving, shooting guns, race car driving, you know, racing Lamborghinis and Ferraris. I like uh, going to golf in nice golf resorts. I like traveling with friends and getting villas and then traveling together and sharing stories and organizing parties. Um, I used to play the violin, so I love uh, hiring orchestras. This is uh, not uh, cheap. And I, I worked my ass off to earn this stuff, and I did it for, my, for myself. I also think that it's kind of cool to entertain you guys as well, so I like to share some of this stuff and just entertain you guys now and then with some of these stories, and also just to let you know who I am. I want to be congruent to who I am, because I'm not the guy that is doing the cold approach in field videos. I'm the guy more just sitting and chatting and talking and doing these kind of things while building a business, building success, and having longer, deeper relationships, more meaningful emotional connections, and what have you. And as a result, that's the kind of person I am. You just have to find the kind of person you are. If you're a younger guy, you want to hit the field and, gain, and hook up with a lot of girls and have a, amazing, massive amounts of dating experience. I already did that. I've gone through that way. I've had that experience. You don't want to be the guy who's trying to just become the successful guy and then tries to get that dating success. You want to have that massive variety in dating experience and success before you start doing the kind of things that you know you can have with success and you know by doing these uh, crazy things I've already talked about. Hit the field, hit the field hard. A lot of guys who are you know successful guys who are you know businessmen and you know already have a developed career, you know can afford to do things like going to like nice lounges and what have you. While other people you go to the park or a nice cafe in Vegas, almost everything's free. Even the valet, most of the hotels have been free up until recently. So I think that one of the things you have to realize is that if you get success, yeah, you can get access to awesome stuff. Owen and I have access to all sorts of really cool toys like drone cameras. We have interesting like uh, houses where you can have video production teams and we'll have parties there to network with people and build a soul circle and enhance our life. But you gotta work hard, you gotta hustle. You have to have that hustle mentality. Most of my life is through this sense of like hustle and that hustle usually has this overbearingness. Owen always talks about how he's able to create this mindset where you can control your emotions is what Stephen Covey says. And what Owen says is, you know what? I just realized one day that you don't need to be stressful. You don't need to be stressed out. So I just choose not to be stressed out. And I actually believe that's true. The challenge is actually practicing that. Most of my time, especially when I'm involved with hardcore business decisions all the time and social decisions and strategy of a very sophisticated and complicated level. I'm stressed out of my mind all the time. In fact, it took me a while even just to get into the flow state, even just recording videos, getting back into the conversational state because so much of my time has been on the computer doing financial controls and accounting systems. And I could talk forever about that kind of stuff. It's not necessarily the most fun though. I'd rather talk about the adventures and like the stories and the passions of my life going forward and sharing that with you. So I hope that you have had some interesting stories and some learnings from this, more as a way to get to know me, but I wanted to also share with you some of the tips I've learned from some of the things I've had in terms of like, I come from a place where, yeah, I grew up most of my life from my dad who had a humble background, but he got success. But he got success around the same time I had success. I had to hustle hard. I believe in that strong work ethic, number one. Two, I believe that only thousands and thousands of interactions in cold approach pickup will get you the success that you can gain attraction on a consistent basis. Three, if you become really successful in business, yeah, don't be afraid of spending money. Don't view money as evil. Be feeling free to take your friends and sharing drinks with them and taking girls out to night dates. Don't expect anything back from it. Do it for yourself. Do it for the experience. Invest in the experience, not the people. 
You're doing it for yourself. You're investing in yourself. It enhances your experience and you appreciate these experiences, do it. Some people gain massive amounts of money. I have a friend who is a billionaire that lives in a trailer park with rolling llamas and rolling ramets and there's like chickens and chicken coops and it, he chooses to live there. I think it's awesome. It's his lifestyle. Like I said, Burning Man lifestyle. Me, I prefer to live in a nice house. Be surrounded by like uh, beautiful surroundings. I'm more excited just in this ambiance. So for me, it enhances my feelings of life, gives me excitement, charisma, energy. Do whatever makes you have that. Do whatever follows your passion. You're not gonna have the same as mine. I'd like to share with them, share with you what they are. So you can if you decide if you want to join me on exploring these passions, but get mastering whatever you want to follow. Do it, get the success, move forward. I hope to see you more in RC Nation. Cheers. Thank you.